Okay. Well, welcome students to lesson 18 of uh, science year three. Um, plants. This is our first lesson for this uh, second uh, unit semester of the year. Uh, this second part of the year, we are going to talk about botany. All right. Uh, and we will have Jens starting and tell us what is botany. Okay. So, Jens, your time. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. So, um, the first academic concept is just like how and why uh, plants were created and that botany is the study of plants and um, it's just kind of a cool thing. I love botany. I rented a book a while back and I learned all the things about plants and it was super fun to learn about. But uh, so the first academic concept, like a, uh, a cool question that says, why do you think plants were put into the earth? Uh, before any other living thing and it's a good question and I just kind of thought about it and um, it's it's kind of cool just to think of like why God created all the things for us and like how much he loves us and um, how everything kind of just works together and so he, he he created plants for us to live and like they're very essential to our life and they provide food and oxygen and, and um, shelter for us to live here in this earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Do you think that uh, um, you know animals could have been created before plant? Okay. What would have happened? Let's suppose you know that that uh, you know animals, the animal kingdom, would have come before plants. What do you think that would have happened? Mm, they probably would have died off pretty quick. <laughs> Because they had nothing to eat and they couldn't breathe and they had nothing to do and so yeah. they wouldn't be able to live. That's right. Yeah. Oh, Aubrey says uh, they would eat each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, also, as we are going to learn with the process of photosynthesis, plants are essential in order for the the, the cycle of a uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen, you know, so uh, plants necessarily must have been been first, really. Now, in the in the scriptures, the scriptures don't say anything about bacteria and archaea, you know, and microorganisms. Why why do you think? that that is the case. Do you think that bacteria and the microorganisms were created after plants or before plants? Um, I don't know. Maybe probably after plants because I don't think bacteria would really thrive and live if there weren't anything to like host in. Mm -hmm. So Connor also says after. Okay. You know, we certainly don't have anything in the scriptures necessarily. Why, why do you think that we probably don't have anything in the scriptures about this? Well, probably just because it wasn't like super important to learn about because God probably knew that we'd learn about it later and figure things out. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So the fact that it's not in the, in the scriptures doesn't mean that Heavenly Father didn't create them. Okay. He just probably thought, you know, no one can see them for now. There's no microscopes yet. Okay, so we are just not going to talk about them. Let's go to the big things. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Aubrey says, after, because bacteria kind of uh, roots from plants. Okay, that is more like a question. So the bacteria don't come from plants. So if, if, we, if we were to look at the... Um, um, kind of evolutionary uh, theory, you know, that basically simpler things are before more complex things, necessarily we would think that bacteria and, uh, you know, all the prokaryotes would come first because they are simpler, simpler, 
you know, in quotations, because there's nothing simple about a bacteria or any of the most simple microorganisms as we have learned. They are not simple, okay? They are amazingly complex uh, organisms, all right? So they couldn't have happened just by chance. They were created, but they probably were probably placed before uh, the higher order organisms, all right? Also, I don't know if you remember, Jens, that um, we talk about one of the functions of bacteria and archaea, that is um, to break down things, okay? <coughs> do you remember that? What, what is it that they do? And even in that, in that, for that matter, also fungi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, bacteria is like in our intestines to help break down the food. Uh -huh. um, bacteria, like fungi, also consumes bacteria like in nature. Like mushrooms are like um, fungi, they've like uh, decomposed mm -hmm. uh, different like wastes and stuff and like things that the earth doesn't really need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, and I don't know if you remember the term lithotrophs. Yeah, aren't they in your cell? And they're like kind of like a function that help break down the things in like the junk that you throw away in your cell. That's right. Yes. Uh huh. And so bacteria probably were necessary even before plants in order to create the soil for plants to exist. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. That yeah. makes sense. Okay. So the same way that plants needed to come before animals because animals need the plants to eat and to produce oxygen, the plants need the fungi and bacteria in order to prepare the soil for the plants to grow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So that they could. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Didn't think uh, about that. Very cool, really. So Connor says that uh, moss can grow on plants. Okay, moss is interesting. Is a, a moss is a mix. Okay, between a fungi and plants. All right. So it's kind of a symbiotic relationship between fungi and plants. So it's kind of both of those together. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, you know, it will be very fascinating to ask Heavenly Father, okay, so how, how did it all happen? Okay, really, how did it all happen? And so to try to, to learn about that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much. So we'll have you come back, Jens, for the third academic uh, concept. All right. Patrick, would you like to take us on the second one? Sure. Alrighty, so this one we get to learn about how plant life begins in a variety of ways. And look at that, that's the academic concept. Alrighty, so plants, a lot, most people think that plants grow from seeds. And there are, there are a lot of seeds because there are a lot of plants. But not all plants grow from seeds. Some grow from bulbs and on yes yeah, seeds are uh, we'll put your seeds here mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of them sometimes we use seeds to make popcorn yes uh -huh. like seeds that. are fantastic um, mm -hmm. and then there's bulbs here bulbs are come from things like onions and garlic and garlic is amazing mm -hmm. so and bulbs work by they just they sort of like split into two bulbs after a while. They sort of just grow a second bulb, and then after that they grow. They, then that bulb grows another bulb, and soon you're multiplying like a lot. Um, yeah, I guess this is a good diagram of the different types of bulbs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then after bulbs, we also 
Well, how? Well, what are, what are balls? Okay, so if we think about the, the the parts of plants, you know, roots, stems, leaves, flowers. Okay, what are the balls? I guess they're like the the part underneath that kind of like the roots, but like I get. I guess for onions, they're kind of like the the part that's underground growing mm -hmm. and reproducing different parts. Okay. See here in the Wikipedia article how it defines the ball. It says it's a short stem with fleshy leaves or leaf bases. Like cabbage. Uh-huh. So what part of the plant would the ball be? Them be? I guess it would be like the, the stem. The stem, yeah. So it's, it's a short stem. Okay, so it's kind of like, like a, a specialized part of the stem and then you have the little uh, layers, okay, around it, like in the onion, are kind of uh, adapted leaves. All right? And the function is for what? Store food. For storing food. Can you imagine? So the new plant that grows from the ball, where is it going to get all this, the, the, the glucose? Remember when we were doing, you know, the glucose and everything in order to produce the energy to create a new plant? Well, it comes from these thick, fleshy leaves, okay, that are not doing photosynthesis. They are not green. Uh, they are made in order to produce all those things, okay? And what are this part here, you know, here, let's see in the, uh, this, this uh, Charlotte's pictures, what would this be? I think it looks like an onion uh -huh. or a, a garlic it, clove. Yeah, uh -huh. so th these are called shallots. They, they are kind of like a mix between an onion and a garlic, okay? Very oh. popular in France. Very yummy. Okay, good. Uh -huh. So what are this part? This part that I'm with the with the mouse indicating at the very tip that is kind of like hair hairs. Roots. That's right, yes. Yeah. So those are roots. So that is the precursor root system, okay, in order for the for the little ball to create to get into a plant. Okay. Okay. So, Aubrey says, the third photo on Wikipedia looks like when you open up a tree, if that makes sense. That's right. So, this is, this is the, you know, kind of a longitudinal cross-section of the bulb, and you see the whole part, okay, the root part, the stem, that is kind of the condensed part of the bulb, and then these fleshy uh, leaves that are for food storage, okay? Excellent. So what? So we have balls. So we have seeds, and balls are two ways that that how plants start. What is the next one? Mm -hmm. The next one is. Let me look here on the lesson plan. Tubers. Tubers. Excellent. Yes. Like potatoes. Like potatoes, uh-huh. You ever been to a potato farm? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. There's things called potato spiders, which, like, live inside of potatoes. Uh -huh. It's like a crazy epidemic. It's horrible. Oh, really? So what do mm -hmm. those uh, potato spiders do? They, they sort of make their homes inside the potato and, like, eat the inside of the potato. And then they they like make an egg sack, and their their babies go off and go eat other potatoes. Oh my goodness! So when you have an infestation of those, that must be really really bad for the, the potato farmer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Okay. Keep going. So what can you tell me about? Tubers, or, you know, potatoes is one type of, of tuber. Mm -hmm. 
tubers are like a bulb. They um, they grow similar to bulbs. They don't get buried as deep though. In the soil, the tops of the sides of the tubers produce little shoots that grow in stems. Like if you ever had a potato, mm -hmm. um, for a really long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then eventually have it like grow into like a, have it grow shoots. Yes, like these ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the potato growing new potatoes, like roots. Mm -hmm. Roots on the stems, okay. Uh -huh. They grow both ways. Uh -huh. So here you have one where the, the, the stems, you can see them growing directly from the potato itself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so if you like, if you just have like a side of a potato with um, some with some tubers on them, you can grow a whole other potato just from the side. That's right. Okay. Oh, and it, it is really the um, the eyes. Okay. So if you see in the picture, the potato has these little uh, uh, places, and that is where the new potato shoots are going to come from. Okay. So what part of the plant is now the potato? I think it's like the stem or the like the root. I think it's a root. Okay, so this is an interesting thing that I, I read here in the Wikipedia article on tubers. Okay. All right. See, it says stem tubers. Okay. And the potato is under the stem tubers. So you have two kinds. You have root tubers and the stem tubers. Hey, I was partially right. Yeah. So the potato is a stem tuber. It says potatoes are stem tubers. And large stolons thicken to develop into storage organs. Okay. So what, what is the potato storing? Uh, nutrients, glucose. That's right. Yes. So it is. It is a, a storing the the starch. Okay, which is a form of a sugar. Okay, and so that is going to be used to produce the next plant. That's right. But it is interesting that potatoes seem to be stems. Okay, so they are thickened. Uh, parts of the plant, of, of the stem of the plant, all right? And then they develop into that, into the, the, the potato. Now we have that the root tubers are when the root is, is uh, enlarged, okay, to store the food. And the sweet potatoes seem to be part of the root tubers. Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, Aubrey, Aubrey ask, uh, says something really interesting. She says, have you ever left potatoes in your cabinet and then forgot about and open it up a year later and like it, you see like a tree? Okay, I saw some photos before, before it, it was cool. So what do you think that happened there? Have you ever seen that? Um... I don't think I have. Uh huh. So uh, what I have seen is sometimes I leave potatoes in the in the pantry, and then when I come back, and they look like this. They are all sprouted. Okay. They are basically all trying to to germinate to create a new plant. Okay. So this is a very cool picture where it shows the potato plant and how. The potatoes are really these enlarged parts of the lateral stems of the potato plant. Okay, sometimes they grow on, uh, under the ground, especially the um, uh, you know the the, the 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 root tubers. Okay, they grow underground. Sometimes potatoes grow you know, kind of in between, you know, right at the uh, above ground or right close to the, the, the surface because they are stem tubers. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. The um the I just I just looked it up. The potato spider is actually called the Jerusalem cricket. The Jerusalem cricket. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So here here I, I was looking at that and I found this article. I don't know if it's the same thing. Spider silk. Okay, no, but that may be so Jerusalem Jerusalem cricket. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Jerusalem cricket. Okay. So that is the the one that causes, you know, it says it's native to western United States and parts of Mexico. Okay. So they are not venomous, but so you say that they eat a lot of potatoes. Yeah, but they, they smell really bad too. Oh, they smell bad. Uh-huh. So they, they really make, um, he says, they are highly adapted feed are used for burrowing beneath moist soil to feed on decaying root plants and tubers. So there you have it. So they do eat the potatoes. Uh, Aubrey says, I'm not going to eat any potatoes for a while. <laughs> I kind of have to make sure it's not enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's a cricket. Oh. Liberty, you say that we, we hate those things. They also infect the squash. Liberty says that they also infect squash. Have you they Liberty says they don't have so many potatoes down here because the potato farmers are in eastern Idaho. I live in Idaho. So they eat our gardens. So this Jerusalem cricket eats the gardens also. Uh, well, a little more he's grateful for having ruined potatoes for him. That's okay, Connor. Not too bad. <laughs> All right, excellent. Okay, so now we have we have looked at different ways that plants begins. They begin with from seeds, balls. Tubers, okay, and then we saw the, the two different types of tubers. And what is the next the next type that is here in the lesson? Oh, sorry, let me scroll down. Yep. Do you want to touch the semester-long activity projects? Um, we'll talk about that in a, in a minute. Actually, after after we finish the lesson, we'll talk about the activity because we have to do this kind of as a semester-long activity. I'll, I'll tell you what we have in mind, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. The next one is called suckers. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, a sucker is a sprout that grows out of the roots of a parent plant, kind of like um, tapping water from the pipes. Yes, uh-huh. Um, oh, you, you go. Okay. So the, the, the scientific name is called basal shoot mm -hmm. of that. What else can you yeah. talk about those? Mm -hmm. so they run horizontally or side to side under the ground, and it pokes up through the ground and begins a new plant. Um, that's how raspberries work. We, we grow raspberries at our house in our backyard. Mm -hmm. We have this small raspberry garden. Okay. And every year we have to just completely clear them out because there's so many plants that pop up in the course of like six months. That's right, yes. Uh -huh. So, but it is interesting, there is a difference. So in the lesson we have here what they call suckers, okay, and then we have here what they call uh, runners. So and the strawberries are under the runner type, okay. Technically, when I was looking at, at this uh, study for the lesson uh, today, I found that the, you know, the, the suckers are basically called basal shoots. And they are really underground roots that are sprouting up. So it is really from roots, okay? Whereas the strawberries that are the runners, they are 
stems that, you know, modify stems that shoot out and then they plant, they make a new plant. Okay. So does that make sense? The difference between, so here you have the strawberry plant and you see here the, the stolon is called or the, the runner stem and then it, it, it touches the ground in another area and makes a new plant. And then it sends another stolon to make another one and so on. This is a beautiful picture of, of that, okay? And that is probably the same problem that you have with the, the, the strawberries. Oh, I, I was saying raspberries. Oh, raspberries. No, that's right. So raspberries are basal shoots. They are suckers. Uh-huh. They, 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 they're so hard to get rid of. They just, like, they grow and then they run out of nutrients, so they die. Uh-huh. So you have to just clear out all the dead ones every year. It's better work with the thorns. Yes, and they have, the, the, the thorns are, oh, so crazy. So, yeah. The raspberries are really good. Uh-huh. Okay, and so, yeah, and the raspberries, they do uh, um, propagate from, uh, from suckers. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good. Okay. Excellent. All right, so here we saw all the different types of propagation. We saw seeds, um, balls, tubers, the two types of tubers, and then suckers and runners. Okay. That is very, very interesting. Uh-huh. Aubrey is asking, uh, let's see, I have a couple of people. So Spencer says, quaking aspers, quaking aspens, sorry, quaking aspens are that way. Same with the strawberries. So what, how do the quaking aspens reproduce? This is the picture of the quaking aspens. How do the aspens reproduce? <laughs> they, so they are our suckers. So Spencer says that they are suckers, yes. So the quaking aspens are notorious for reproducing with suckers. So they have very long root systems but actually start new plants of aspens in the forest. So the, 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 the same goes that when you plant one aspen, you are actually planting a forest, <laughs> okay? Because you are going to have aspens growing everywhere. They really they go a long, long way. In fact, I've heard that around here in Utah, there's a, an aspen forest, okay, that is called the Pando Forest, that is the, long, the largest organism, living organism in the world. It's one aspen that is the whole forest. The whole forest is the same tree, okay? Um, and so, okay, so Aubrey says that aspens have the label of the biggest living organism in the world. I believe it is located in Utah. Yeah, it is called Pando. Okay, that is the, the Pando forest. Mm -hmm. So, you really, it's very to cut down. The problem is that uh, because it is one tree, it is, the whole forest has the same genetic information, okay? And so the problem is that if, if the, the forest gets a pest, you know, some sort of mold or bacteria that makes the tree sick, the whole forest uh, can die mm -hmm. because it's just one tree, literally, okay? Mm -hmm. So Anna also says that she had to, to get uh, raspberries out of control. Many times they would get out of control. Excellent. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for explaining now this uh, concept about how plants propagate. Okay, Jens, could we have you back? 
and do the third here academic concept for us. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right, so academic concept three is just like about when you plant something, you're not going to get like a whole different plant. So like when you plant... Could you speak a little louder? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so like academic concept three is um, pretty much just like if you plant like a potato, you're not going to get like a carrot. Like you're going to get a potato. So like it's not like... You're, it's an unexpected vegetable or fruit. You know you're going to get something if you mm -hmm. plant that certain seed. And so it's just like nothing's going to come out of, or a different thing isn't going to come out of a carrot, or it's going to be a carrot. And a funny video came with it, and it's kind of like one of those old LDS videos that's like from the 80s, and it's pretty funny. Uh -huh. Slice up the watermelon and get tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, so they have the family go ahead and tell us about the video, what happens. And so, like, this family is starting to plant, like, a garden. And so, like, they're planting the garden, and then they come out after everything's grown, and they cut open a watermelon, and tomatoes come out, and then they pull up, like, carrots, and a potato comes out. And so they're just like confused and like wondering <laughs> what's going on and they don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that was very funny <laughs> how they do. That's awesome. Yeah, very interesting carrots. <laughs> So that's right. So that would be, you know, a, you know, it would be impossible, really. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'd be weird. <laughs> very, very much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, I'm going to do very briefly here the first gospel principle. I didn't have a volunteer for that. So thank you, gents, for that. No so. The, the gospel principle is kind of related here to this principle that we, we, we uh, harvest, you know, what we grow, okay? And really, the, the, the gospel principle says we reap the character that we sow, okay? So no one really is the way that he or she is just by, by chance. We are all how we are because of the things that that we've done, okay? And, and the things that we do really uh, build our character, okay? There's a very, very famous quote, okay, that says, we sow our thoughts and we reap our actions. We sow our actions and we reap our habits. We sow our habits and we reap our characters. We sow our characters and we reap our destiny, our eternal destiny. Mm -hmm. And so we have a choice really about what we want to, to be. Okay, Kaya says we are what we do. Okay. And um, eh, so that is, that is really a very, very important thing, okay? So Liberty, you have, let me see. Oh, that is, the, that is the one that you were going to do, Liberty. My goodness, Liberty, keep going, Liberty. You take it over from me from here. <laughs> um, okay, well, um, so what you said, so we reap what we sow. So sow is kind of like what you plant. So what you do is what you get in the end. I once heard something that was along the lines of like life is like a mirror and what you are is going to be reflected back at you. So like if you lie a lot then people are going to lie to you and things and you reap what you sow. And it made me think of a, a song from the hymn, hymnal um, called like We Are Sowing and it's the lyrics are like we are sowing, daily sowing, countless seeds of good and ill. 
um, scattered on the level lowland, cast upon the windy hill. So it kind of just talks about it. Um, and we're sowing different seeds every day of different things, and um, <laughs> that kind of like turns out how we're going to be in the end. That's right. Yes. Uh huh. Here we have the the the, the hymn. On that one, have you have you ever sung this one? That's the one I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I haven't sung this one in a long time, but I remember that we we sang it quite a bit in Spanish in Argentina. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I don't know why, but it is really a very very important message of this of this hymn. James, I am not going to sing. Okay. Liberty, would you like to sing for us? Um, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Aubrey says, my mom was singing that just a second ago. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that is something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, um, I have um how does this this principle apply to to each one of us individually liberty how can we apply this principle um well i think it's just that well just what it said like so we sow our thoughts and then we reap our destiny eventually. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so the things we do will directly affect how we're going to turn out in the end. Like, for example, I am a really bad nail chewer and I chew my nails. It's just a horrible habit I have. And um, I've never been able to break it. And so I just have really short nails. And just because those are the s seeds that I've um, planted, I now, now have short nails. I can't chew my nails and still have long nails because of the choices I've made and they're going to affect me. Like not, this is kind of like a really silly kind of small example, but mm -hmm. um, all the seeds that we plant are going to affect us in some way. We can't ever just do anything and think it won't affect us. And we can, so when we sow our thoughts and reap our actions and so on, it can be good or bad. If we do good things, then that's good for us, but if we do bad things, then it's bad. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I remember when I was about, you know, I was just a, a teenager, okay, probably about 13, 14 years old, um, we had a, a lesson at church about this principle, this concept, and the teacher taught us, and, and he, he asked us, what are some of the things that you would like to change? Okay. And um, one of the things that came for me to mind was that, again, at that age, living in Argentina, uh, a lot of people use uh, swear words. Okay. They use swear words all the time. Okay. The, you know, uh, there are some people that it seems that they cannot say half of a sentence without using a a swear word, all right. And I noticed that I was uh, starting to also use some, uh, you know, not not very bad, but mild swear words uh, were creeping up in my vocabulary. And so the teacher challenged us and, and said, you know, following this principle that our thoughts, our actions uh, kind of become part of our character. And he said, Every time that you think of a, of a swear word, replace it for another word and repeat that other word all the time, okay? And so I started doing that and little by little, I was able to literally change the way that I was speaking and not using swear words anymore, okay? Whenever I had to... to say something I would use the, the replacement swear word okay that was not a swear word and so um, I was able to get that out of my my vocabulary all right 
And later on, I remember in, in college that, that my friends, uh, they just thought that I never uh, swear or I never said anything, you know. But, so I think that that is, that is a, an, important, an important application of that, okay. Braden says the same goes to rude words, okay. If you treat others rudely, all right. Jen said, uh, if you don't work hard and learn in school, we will not able to support ourselves. That's right. Okay. So there are, you know, the consequences to the, to the, the actions that, that we choose. So what do you think would be some things that, you know, you kind of don't like of yourself that you would like to change? What things could be that, that we would like to change? For example, this habit, liberty of uh, biting your nails, do you like that or would that be something that you would like to change to have you know, stronger, uh, longer nails? Well, it doesn't actually bother me that much, mm -hmm. but yeah, I guess I could change that. I guess one thing that I would like to change is like going to bed on time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just, our, our whole family tends to kind of stay up really late sometimes. So then when we're, when I have to get up early in the morning for seminar or something, I can be really tired. So I'm reaping my actions on that one. That's right. Yes. Uh huh. That's right. Kaya says, I would like to speak kinder, having a stronger work ethic and be more positive. Okay. So what, what would be some of the things that Kaya could do to, to develop like a more positive attitude? What would be some of the things that, that we could do to have a more positive attitude? Aubrey says, think of everything you do have instead of the things that you don't have, all right? Think of the things that I'm grateful for. Excellent, Kaya, yes, uh-huh. Aubrey says, I didn't have very much confidence, so I cut my hair into a pixie haircut, and now I feel amazing, like I could conquer the world. <laughs> Jens has a very, very good idea. Read the scriptures. Everything seems more positive then. Okay. All right. Excellent. And Connor reaffirms that, yes, Aubrey's hair is really short. <laughs> okay. So now Patrick is sending me the 15-minute alert time. All right. So thank you, Liberty, and sorry for, for taking some of your, <laughs> your time again. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm a doofus <laughs> here. All right. Mm -hmm. Kaya says, I have been trying to catch myself when I am going to say something negative and try to say something positive instead. Excellent. Excellent. It really starts with those, those efforts, really. Very, very important. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Samuel says, go outside. Okay. Go outside or, you know, be, you know, uh, be in the environment and everything. One of the things that I have found also that helped me a lot to relax, okay, is actually looking at plants. Okay. Looking and, and that is one of the things that we are going to, to do here now during this class, I really encourage you to look at the plants that are around, small, large, everything, you know, just observe, look at the trees, okay? Um, so all of those things are really, really helpful. Um, Jens, again, says uh, that singing also makes us more positive, and that is true, all right? I sing a lot of times when I feel, I'm feeling down, <laughs> okay? I have a few hymns that, that help me to, to reconnect, okay, especially when, when I'm feeling down. 
So, okay, so now in the lesson here, we have an activity, okay? And this is actually like a semester long activities and projects. So let me, let me explain to you what would be the end result of what we want to accomplish at the end of this semester, okay? During this semester, I want you to learn an experiment with germinating seeds, propagating plants, a planning a garden. So one of the projects that we are going to do in a few weeks is actually to start the plan for your garden. You may already have a garden going in your family, so that would be a perfect thing to, to, to do, all right? So to help with the family planning of your garden. Where are you going to plant things? What are you going to plan? When are you going to start the different plants in order to harvest at the appropriate times and so on? There are some plants that grow very well in colder weather, so you have to start them soon, all right? There are other plants that you need to germinate them inside and then take them out and, and so on. So all those things are things that we are going to do during this semester, okay? Sadly enough, the semester is going to finish before we can actually reap a full harvest. Okay, but the end project, at the end of the semester, I want you to shoot a video of the things that you have done, okay? So this is going to be a, a video report at the end of the semester where you show your plan, your preparation, the germination of your plants, and so there are some things that you are going to have to start documenting, taking pictures or shooting videos now as you move along this process. And then at the end, you, I want you to submit a video of your garden, okay? It doesn't matter if it's large or small, all right? Samuel says, I'm growing potatoes, okay? Uh, Anna says, our family has been wanting to start a garden for a long time. This could be a good excuse. This is an amazing excuse. So could it be a PowerPoint presentation? Yes, it could be a PowerPoint presentation, but I need uh, pictures, okay? All right. So we are not starting this summer. We are going to start actually because, because of the... The, the, the nature of gardening, you need to start earlier, all right? For example, uh, you know, lettuce and, and other things, other cold weather plants, you can start them at the beginning of February, all right? Because they are cold weather uh, plants, all right? And so that is going to be part of the planning and the, the doing. By May, okay, so our class finishes at the end of May. By May, we would have most of our garden already planted and growing, okay? So we don't have to wait until the summer. If we wait until the summer, most of the times it's too late, okay? It does matter what kind of plants. Kaya asked that, that question, and yes, it does matter what kind of plants you you are going to plant, and it all depends on your area, where you live, the weather that you have, the type of soil that you have, okay, and so on, all right? It is, it is a part of it is going to be cold weather gardening, and then part of it will be for summer harvest, okay? Megan says that we have a huge garden every year. Excellent, Megan. I can't wait to see it, all right? And Kay asked, but we can pick the plants. Yes, you can pick whatever plants you want to, you want to put in the garden. And it could be a flower garden. It could be an edible garden, okay? You know, like lettuce and tomatoes, plants that you eat. 
it could be a long-term garden project, okay? So sometimes you may want to consider planting fruit trees. Well, fruit trees generally take several years, okay, before they start producing. Asparagus also take about three years before they, they start producing. Megan asked if we can plant a pizza garden. <gasps> oh, that would be awesome. I would love that. I love pizza. If it would grow in the garden, I would plant it. <laughs> okay. Aubrey says we have a strawberry planting thing. When we when would be planting that? Okay. I don't know. So those are all things that you need to um, study and research as part of this project. Okay. Uh, Breakin, Breakin says we live in mountain green, so we can plant our cold weather seeds. But our other plants we cannot plant until Memorial Day. We have a shorter period in our colder climate. So breaking in that case, okay, in the cases where you are in a cold weather areas, you can start, uh, of course, your cold weather garden for sure. And then you can start germinating plants indoors, okay, in order to have them ready to be transplanted outdoors, okay, when the weather is uh, appropriate. Does that make sense? So that is going to be for this semester's project, all right? One of the things that I need you to do for next class is to get some seeds and start germinating these uh, seeds, okay? So I think that Megan wants to say something. Okay, Megan, you have was, mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I was just saying that a pizza garden actually is a real thing. You don't actually grow pizza, but you would grow things that you would put on pizza. <laughs> so a bunch of different seasonings and stuff like that. It's called a pizza garden, though. Excellent, excellent. That's good. All right. So uh, Samuel is asking, how do you germinate seeds? Anybody has a quick answer? Because my yes. answer is go and research that. But what is your answer, Patrick? Mm -hmm. um, you, you put them if you if you want to do it without dirt, you can just put them on a damp paper to paper towel and let them sit in the sun. Or you could just plant it in a pot and water it daily, give it plenty of sunlight. Yep. Um, I have a question. Could I, for my project, just do potato, tomato, and a type of flower? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Whatever it is that you, you, you know, charity, for example, says here, my family is moving before summer, so this is will be interesting to do. Also, I suppose since we are buying my grandmother's house, my family could just start planting the garden there. I'm looking forward to this. I love homegrown tomatoes. Yes, I love that too, Charity. So, uh, so you can start planning. So one of the concepts that I want you to learn is that doing a garden requires planning, requires forethought and planning beforehand. And that is what part of the project that we are going to do early on, okay? Sydney says that they use burlap to germinate uh, plants, okay? So you put the seeds in burlap and you water the, the area. Sometimes you can germinate seeds in cotton, okay? So at the beginning, when the seeds germinate, they don't need a whole lot of soil because they are not they haven't developed the roots yet to get nutrients from the soil. The seed itself, okay, as we have seen, is kind of the food storage for the plant to start growing, all right? Next class, we are going to talk about seeds. So lesson 19 is all about seeds, and that is what we are going to concentrate on that, okay? Excellent. So now let me switch and we are going to talk about the um, midterm exam 
Okay, so last class I asked, uh, uh, it was after the class, so not everyone participated in this, but, uh, but I asked, would you like to do kind of a comprehensive exam on the unit of cytology? And most of, most of you that were around here, they say, yes, that would be great, okay? And so I have two exams, okay? One is going to be a quiz, all right? And this quiz is basically um, taking questions from all the quizzes that you have already taken in the in the lessons. Okay, so it shouldn't it shouldn't be anything new. Okay, here, Kaya is asking, can you use notes on the quiz? Yes. So here it says. This is an open book quiz. You may refer to the lessons in the Family School Online, so you can have that open. You can uh, use the links to the websites in the lessons. You can use Wikipedia, and you can use your own notes. The only thing that you cannot do, you cannot open the previous quizzes in Canvas because, of course, those quizzes will show you what are the, the answers to the question. So you cannot do that. You cannot open the other quizzes, okay? But you can use your notes and external uh, resources to do that, okay? So, um, so that is going to be the quiz part, okay? Breaking is asking, can you tell me how I will know what my grade is in cytology? to know how much extra credit I need to do. Five or six of my assignments have not been recorded, so my grade is weighted heavier on the quizzes that I have had a harder time on. And yes, so uh, I'm trying to work really hard, guys, to grade your assignments, okay? So that is, you know, as I keep developing the lessons and everything, I'm trying to catch up with the grading. And I cannot tell you much about your total uh, grade until I finish the grading. But, you know, my suggestion is uh, do some of the extra credit things, okay, just in case, okay? There are several of you that have more points, more than 100 points for sure, more 100% of the points for sure, because you volunteer to do, you know, the extra credit things all the time, and so that is that is great. Mm -hmm. um, Kaya is, can you study the previous quizzes before the exam and when it is due? So that is, that is, you can do that. So you can study the previous quizzes. So the due date is January 19, and you have available from today until the 19th. So you have to do this this week, okay? The quiz is going to be available this week. There's no assignment for lesson 18. The assignment for lesson 18 is this quiz and this test, okay? That is why in the family school here in the, in the lesson itself, when you go to lesson supplements, the assignment is basically here the comprehensive quiz and the long essay exam, okay? These instructions are the same instructions as I have here in, in Canvas, all right? So that is, that is one. The next one is the long essay question exam. And for that, okay, let's see over here, okay. So the, the instructions, Kay asks, what happens if I don't, if we don't finish in one hour, all right? No problem, if you don't finish in one hour, you don't finish in one hour, it's, it's okay. So I, I have taken the, the exam a couple of times to make sure that everything is okay. And I am confident that you will be able to finish it in one hour. But remember, you have about a minute and a half per question. Okay, so yeah, just pace yourself. Just study and, and pace yourself, all right? The long essay exam, the long essay exam is going to be harder, all right? So this is a written 
close book, okay, comprehensive exam testing your depth of knowledge on two of the main topics that we studied, okay? I'm not going to tell you what the topics are. Ha, 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 that's part of the trick, all right? So when you get to the exam, you will see two long essay questions, okay? So there's only two questions. Each question is going to have two topics, okay? For each question, you choose one topic and you write your essay on that topic, okay? So there's a total of four topics, but you have to do two. One of the two in the first question and then one of the two in the next question. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and so each, the total time is 90 minutes. So you have about 45 minutes for each essay. All right. Okay. Um, so that is that is the, the thing, all right? So each essay is worth 20 points for a total of 40 points, all right? So let me see. Braden asks, so the lesson 18 won't have a late point deduction because it's due tonight while the tests are due on the 19th. That's correct, okay? So uh, for lesson 18, there's no points. It's zero points because there's nothing there to turn in for lesson 18, okay? Uh, Kea asks, could you give some sort of a study guide for the essays? I'm getting just a little stressed out, all right? Okay, so the best thing that I can tell you, okay, is if you go here to the, the class, all right, and you see the lessons, so the first semester includes 17 lessons. All right, what are the main topics here of the lessons? What are the main topics that, that you know, the things that we have really study hard, okay? What are the main topics? What, what would you say, guys, that would be the things to study, okay? Jen says ATP and cells. That's right. Okay. So remember, we spend a lot of time on ATP. DNA, breaking says DNA. That's right. Yeah. Okay. What did we study about DNA? We took, you know, two or three lessons to talk about, about this. What were some of the things that, that we studied? Mm -hmm. Okay, think about, you can look at here all the lessons, all right. Anna says proteins, yes, okay. Do you remember that, you know, we, we spent several lessons talking about DNA, DNA transcription from DNA to messenger RNA, and then from RNA into amino acids, and then how that makes proteins. So that is one of the main topics to study. And you have all the materials here to study in the lesson itself, all right? Ryan also mentions cellular respiration. That's right, cellular respiration. We spend several classes talking about cellular respiration, what are the processes that, how do ATP is produce, the cycle of ATP, and then other ways of producing ATP. Remember, we talk about fermentation and then uh, fatty acid uh, synthesis, you know, how fatty acids produce a lot more ATP than glucose, okay? All right, what were some of the other main topics that we studied? James mentioned cells. What did we study about cells in kind of in general? What were some of the things that we studied? Mm -hmm. We studied prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. And 
what were the organelles of the cells? Okay, what are the all the different parts of the cell? Okay, the function of each organelle, how they are composed, and so on. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Then we talk, what else? What other main topics do you see that we did? Okay, we talk about bacteria. Mm -hmm. That's right, we talk, uh, when we talk about prokaryotic cells, we talk about bacteria and how some bacteria are good, how some bacteria are bad, the infections of bacteria. Then we talk about viruses and, you know, the difference between a viral infection, a bacterial infection, how do you prevent each and so on. So those are the things that you study. Okay. We talk a lot about sicknesses. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Yes. And so that is, so the, the lessons here, Kaya, so the, Kaya's question was, you know, what is the study guide? Well, your lessons are really the study guide. So my suggestion is study the lessons, okay? Review the material in the lessons. You can even review the previous uh, quizzes. Then you take the quiz, okay, the comprehensive quiz, and then you do the, the written exam, okay? So that is going to, to be a lot of uh, a successful way of doing it, okay? In the written exam, I share with you here the rubric of uh, how I'm planning to grade, all right? So you will have here the information about what is it that I'm expecting for you to, to perform, okay? All right, so that is going to be that, all right. Good luck. Do you have any other questions for me? If not, we are going to finish and... and uh... I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So is this available till Monday next week or does it end in this week? It's uh, available until the 19th at midnight. So I believe that it will be next Tuesday at midnight. Okay, so you have one whole week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And um, Brittany says, thank you for explaining that clearly. That's good. Excellent. I'm, I'm glad. And uh, Braden says, if we die, does Latter-day Learning pay for the tombstones? Yes, uh -huh. if we die because of the exam, okay, if your cause of death can be directly linked to the exam, we pay for your tombstone. <laughs> All right, how many questions are in the first? Justin, what do you mean in, in the first, in the first what? Okay, Justin, let me open your mic to see if you want to. Uh, hello? Yes, go ahead. I was just wondering how many questions were in the first quiz thing that we're going to do with the exam oh, thing. Okay, in the quiz, there are 40 questions. 40 questions, one point for each question? Sorry? Is it one point for each question? One point for each question, that's right, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. just checking. Yep. Just checking. Mm -hmm. And there are questions from every single lesson, okay, pretty much. <laughs> okay, all right. Justin, would you like to dismiss us with a prayer since you are up? Mm -hmm. um, sure, I guess. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Please bless that um, we can remember all that we were taught in science today and that we can do well on the exams and that, and it's best that we can be safe and learn more in the coming weeks and we look with all our hearts just Christ Amen. 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 Thank you very, very much. Mm -hmm. I was half tempted to make sure I was have to just say make sure latter day learning doesn't have to pay for anybody's tombstones. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm I'm very confident. The reason why I said that is because I'm confident that none of you is going to die. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll all be fine. You 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 learn a lot, so you'll be okay. <laughs> Break breaking ask about time limit. So the comprehensive exam has a 90 minute total. So when you start the quiz. Make sure that you have 60 minutes uninterrupted time, okay? And when you start the, 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 the essay exam, make sure that you have at least an hour and a half uninterrupted time, okay? Okay, that's, so that is important. Don't, you know, don't, don't take breaks or anything because the clock will keep running. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, well, thank you very much.